Hi everybody, Wendy from Cinnamon Sweet Shop. I'm going to be showing you how to make this cute, adorable Day of the Dead sugar skull. Although it's not made from sugar, but it's supposed to replicate a sugar skull that they use for Day of the Dead. So to start, I bought this skull from the Dollar Tree. This was only a dollar and it has a, a soft, glazy sheen to it. So I found that when I painted, the paint tends to rub off easily. So I used a white primer and I primed it. Also, I used the white primer because I'm not painting this one black. This one I did black. I didn't really need to do, worry so much about the color blending in. This one I'm going to do purple and I'm going to do a red one as well. So I wanted to try to get as much of the black lightened as possible so the paint will come on evenly. The other tools you're going to need, other than the colors of paint that you choose, are dotting tools to do this. Now you can get really creative with dotting tools and improvise. For the larger dots, which I will be doing a lot of on this particular skull, I use crochet meat hooks. So, and I will have these in the description box below, the, uh, the name, the size, and where you can get them. If you can't get them in Michaels, or your local crafter, you can get them on Amazon. So the reason you need this is we want to use the flat side. And you can use, if you have anything around the house, you can use, you can, instead of these, if you can't find them, you can use wood dowels. As long as the bottom is flat and round, you can use erasers for real tiny dots. I have these dotting tools. I actually did see something very similar to this in the Dollar Tree a while ago. I don't know if they still have it. For the eyes, I have these glass crystals that I bought. I got these, I think, in Michaels. They sell them in any craft store, and they sell them in all different colors, all different shapes. These, and even at Pearls, you can use Pearls instead. These I'm going to glue into the eyes when I'm done. The different color ones are really, really nice because it makes the eyes stand out a little bit more. So once your primer dries, then you have the task of painting. As I said, I want to do this purple, make it a little bit of a brighter color. And depending on the paint you use, the brand, the quality, you may have to do two coats. We'll see how it comes out. Let this completely dry when you're done. While the skull's drying, I'm gonna show you how I do some of the dot painting. It's really, it's not difficult, but it may take a little bit of practice. So here I have all my crochet hooks and my dotting tools. As I said, I use the flat end. And for this example, I'm gonna use the largest crochet hook. And I'm just going to dip it in some black paint. You don't want to overcoat this at all or else it'll be runny and a mess. Just dip it in enough to coat the whole bottom. Hold that dotting tool straight up and down and just press down. And then lift it straight up. And there you have your first circle. Now I also like to take a damp cloth just to wipe off the bottom. As you can see, I've used this cloth a lot for dotting. It's totally full. It's an old washcloth that I had. So from there, I'm going to use a smaller tool. I'll use one of these dotting tools and I have some red and I'm just going to, and I'm going to eyeball this. You can measure this out and dot. I'm reloading the tip with each new dot. And you're going to see why in a moment I'm doing that. So I have four little red dots. Then I'm going to just take this and do two in between each red dot, same size. And if they're not perfect, it doesn't matter. This certainly isn't perfect. It still looks very, very nice. So then I'll take a larger, larger tool. This is a um, another crochet hook. And, and you can use as many colors as you want. I'm just going to stick with the same two colors just for this example. On the skull, I'm not doing this at all. I'm going to use totally different colors. 
but I'm going to take this and again I'm holding this straight up and down and put that in between those two. I'm going to skip a spot. Skipping that one and going right into here. Skipping this one, going right into there. Right into there. And just like that. Looks nice, doesn't it? But we're not done. I'm going to show you a technique that I use a lot. It's called walking the dots. And for this one, I'll just use obviously smaller tip. And I'm going to use black just so you'll see the contrast. So I want to stay right on top, right there. And I'm going to dip that black tool or that tool into the black paint, hold it up. And then I'm not going to redip it, but I'm going to walk these dots around that circle. Now you'll see what happened. Let me hold this up to the camera. With each dot walking, it's less and less paint. So it's it, the size graduates down to nothing. Then I'm going to dip it again. Now I, I definitely want to redot this one just so that I don't have too much for the next one. And again, I'm going to walk that dot. Look at that. Now another technique that I do, I call these swooshes. I have no idea what the technical term is, if there's even a technical term. And I still don't have these great. They take some practice, but as I said, even if you don't get them perfect, they still look really nice. So I'm going to take one of these dotting tools, I'm going to use this in red, and I really want to load up the ball at the end. See that? From here, I'm going to start with this dot and just pull it straight down. And it will gradually thin out. Let me move all this out of the way. And this is where I usually have a hard time. You could just take it and if you do that, like that, and then you can take like a fleur de lis. Bring it like that, and then like that. You can also do this with a toothpick if you or a thinner thinner tool and you can just bring that actually we'll do it with a thicker tool so you bring that you can make that dot and then from there just bring that down and then just kind of mold it into shape like that so you could kind of do it the longer way as well but either way they look really nice once this dries, then we can just add another dot on top. So I took a smaller crochet needle and I'll just dab this in the center like that. I could put a third coating on top too when this dries if I want to go and do white or black again. Now, you could go on and on and on with this. So if you have a bigger, in this case, I've, I want to fill the whole card up. I could just take another, make some more dots. You know, I could take, um, I'll use this one since I'm holding it. Just go around and do that. And then fill in all the spaces in between very easily. Walk the dots around, make multiple let rows of this. So if I wanna walk this around, I could do it in a different color. This is definitely a different size. See the difference? It just wait. It just makes it look really that much nicer. Really very easy to do. Anybody could dot paint. It doesn't really take a lot of skill. Looks more complicated than it really is. And you can dot paint pretty much almost anything. I dot painted an umbrella, flower pots, dishes, anything. There, how's that for you? Well, I'm using some pinks, purples, blue, maybe even get yellow in there because I'm just gonna eyeball this. So it's not like I'm following any set pattern, but I am using a large crochet hook. Make sure you get nice and round, lift straight up. And that's pretty good. Now, what I would normally do is let this dry a little bit because there's a lot of paint on here. And because of the nature of 
this going down, it's going to drip down. So I usually will hold this up or I'll prop it up next to some paint bottles and a little one here and just let this dry. Now with a smaller crochet hook, again, I'm using the flat side, not the curvy side. And you can get creative, as I said before. I'm going to take do some more dotting. So I'm going to do one directly on top. I am eyeballing this. You can actually measure these out. I'm just going to do three. I want to do one right where the brow would normally be on this side. And then right where the brow would be on this side. With a larger tip and a darker color, place this in between these two dots without touching them. Then with one of the smaller dotting tools, I'm going to go back to that light color and make a dot right on top. Reload. Reload. Okay, so now I'm going to be using some of these purple, blue-purple colors. And I'm going to start with this dark blue, which is ultramarine blue, with a very with a much smaller dotting tool. As you can see, this is not even perfectly lined up. It doesn't really matter a lot, but we're going to walk the dot. So remember, we start at the center and then just go all the way down. I'm only walking it on the one side. Then I'm going to take the lighter color and go around again. I'll start with the center. I'm going to take it down a little bit smaller on the dotting tool and I'm going to take some white and go around this again. As you can see, I'm just doing the one side only. I'm gonna add in some yellow to this. So on this empty side, you know, start in the middle just so you can see it a little better. I am going to go back to the dark blue and we're just going to just play around with some of these dots. They don't have to be in any particular direction and just start there and then just turn it into the center. I'm going to start at the very end. You can even use a bigger dotting tool. Take this out here. Walking the dots is really one of my favorite Techniques and if you don't have room down here, like I sort of don't, you could just leave it blank or just do whatever you can with that one. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to take the yellow with the same dotting tool, go a little further up, and I go around like that. I'm going to go to a smaller yellow dotting tool, just a little bit smaller, and I'm just going to take it and go in a different direction. Same color. As I said, I'm really not following any kind of planned pattern with this, which I usually do. Sometimes it comes out nicer when you just wing it. Go back to the bigger tip, the side, and I'm going to again take that yellow and go back through there. Right here, we'll just go right on top of that center one and we'll just take some of the dark blue down. And you see what we did so far? It looks, just brightens it up a bit. 
So now I'm going to go back to the pink and some of the larger, maybe I'll take um, this blue one, and some of the larger dotting tools. And from here, I'll just do it right by these blue. Now, you could take this all the way down. I usually only take it to the line. There's like a seam right here because when they're sitting like this, you're not really gonna see it past that. And then I'll take it down to the side of the face. So I'll usually bring it around. Again, you could do what you want. I just feel it takes a lot of time. So I see that right here, it's not covered terribly well. So you could take a toothpick or dotting tool just to swish around some of the paint to cover it a little bit better, or you could just redot it. So what I'm gonna do next with the white is, I am gonna do some dotting around there. So let's take it with mm, the, the cranberry. And I'm just gonna eyeball the distance. Just wanna do a couple on that side, a couple on this side. Like that. So you can see back here, we have a lot of spaces. I'm gonna fill a lot of these in later on. But what I like to do first is take this right here and I'm gonna use this smaller dotting tool. These little ones are not really numbered, so I couldn't even tell you what numbers they are. But I am gonna go in between and do, put a yellow dot in between the, the cranberries. So now let's get some swooshes in there. So I will do that, I'm gonna do that with the dark. So I'm gonna really load up start here and then I'll take those smaller swooshes around the side in a lighter color not really smaller I'm using the same same dotting tool I'm just swishing it over again they're not mine aren't really perfect and then there's a line so it's gonna be even less perfect. I could fill that in with the dotting tool. I find the faster you do these, the better they come out. So as you can see that now, I wanna fill these in. So what I will do with that is take some white, the small little dotting tool, and I'm just gonna dot around just where I have some space. If you don't have space, then just don't worry about it. So I added in some more large dots and I'm going and I am walking the dots again up around the entire circle from there and I'm going to take it and I am going to do it again with the same color because I want to make this go all the way back. Then I'm going to take the darker blue and go over it again. Then I'll take this red dotting tool with some yellow. This is a little bit bigger and just to fill in this area Do the same thing, going straight down. So before I move on, I wanna wait for all of these dots to dry because I am gonna 
over, do some dotting on top as well, just to give it some dimension, it makes it look a lot nicer as well. And then I'm gonna cover the face. So I will be painting the teeth white. You can paint them any color. On one of the skeletons I did silver. It really will depend on what blends in with your overall color scheme. If in doubt, you're, you can't go wrong with white. So there are lines in here, though it is kind of hard to keep in with the lines on the teeth. And I'll just go down white with this. This takes a bit of time too, because you're gonna have to do each tooth individually. Once it dried, I did do some dotting in between these, or on top of these rather. So I took the light pink and I took a slightly smaller dotting tool and went over it with the cranberry. And the same for the light blue. I used this one and went over it with a dark blue color. For these red circles, I like to use yellow. I'm gonna use a much smaller dotting tool. And for the pink, I'm gonna use that lavender color. For this, I'm going to use a light pink. Now I'm definitely going to be doing another dot on top of some of these others when that dries. But in the meantime, while waiting, I'm going to start working on the face. So for the eye covering, let's see. What I might do is just a big dot there and then just do some small ones around. So I'm going to take my yellow and I am going to do this in yellow. I think it'll stand out a little bit better. Go straight down, put the dot here and then do again on the other side. Be careful when you are moving this because you don't want to touch the freshly wet paint. So from here, I will take a smaller dotting tool and hold right in the nose. And with the yellow, I'll just dot along here. So I'm going to do a bit of dotting around this whole area. And we'll do that with, do some lavender. So we'll just do like that. And then I'll just take a few this way. that nice and load it with paint and I will take that and just do a swoosh down put a red dot actually I want to do that a little bit bigger Get a nice red dye, keep that nice and flat. Now I could make this a little nicer just by dotting down the teeth, which I think I'm gonna do that. So we'll just take a dot, dot, dot. 
So guys, I actually added some more into this. As you can see, I did add some more detailing. And you could just go on and on changing off the colors, doing just doing all the techniques wherever you find that there's space. I could even add more. I may add some more to the sides here. So to glue the eyes, and I'm using a glue gun. Of course, you can use any glue. I just find that this works well because it dries quickly. And I'm using these gems and just placing it in the center. I like the glue gun because it really dries quicker. So let's get the other eye in. Now, of course, you don't have to put anything in here. You could just decorate with more dots. But I think it looks kind of nice with the eyeball. Here's the other one. Especially with the gem. You can also use embellishments on top of these dots. I put some little crystals on top of one of the other ones I did. So here are the three skulls that I made. I hope you like them. If you like this video, thumb it up. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and I will have many more videos coming up. Have a great day.